This is part three in uh, the sequence of videos on how to do group buy and aggregation. So in this one, we'll do uh, deal with uniqueness of your, the grouping and some multi-column grouping. So in this example, we use the Northwind database. Execute that. And let's do a basic join between categories and products. And here we see uh, multiple products in the uh, beverages category multiple products in the confections category. And now let's aggregate these. So I'm going to group by the category and calculate an uh, average unit price. So there we go, group by the category name, and there's the average unit price. Awesome, looks like it's running great. The numbers look reasonable. Uh, but I'm going to add one more column to the grouping. Notice I'm adding the category ID to this grouping. And what you should notice is that now I see that there are actually two different categories with the category name of beverages. So I didn't, you might not know that ahead of time. I know it because I cooked the data here. But uh, the schema did not require that category name be unique. And so there's, it's not really reasonable for me to expect for category name to be unique. And as a result, these two beverages categories got combined, and then the average unit price was incorrectly calculated. So uh, let's add this column to make sure we understand what's going on, or this query. And notice that I have two different categories, both with the name beverages and I happen to know that I have a couple of products that I added to this bogus category. Or it's not a bogus category. It's one that I cooked up to demonstrate this. So again, this is the, this is the added piece. So there's two categories with the same name. Um, is that all right? Well, apparently it is because the schema did not require it to be unique. So, um, so the lesson here is to always specify a unique grouping. Uh, without uh, going over into the schema and looking, I don't, I can't really guarantee that there's a unique index on that column. And even if there were a unique index on that column, uh, somebody might remove it later uh, without substantially changing the schema. So, in general, um, specifying a unique grouping has to do with uh, adding the primary key to the group by clause. So here you can see that I'm grouping by category name, but in order to achieve a unique grouping, I add the category ID. Uh, the category ID is not being displayed, but I can see now that there are two different categories with the same name, and they are accurately separated, and the average unit price is accurately calculated. So as another example, let's look at suppliers and how I might ensure that I have a unique grouping is that even though I'm only showing the company name in the results, I also add supplier ID uh, to ensure a unique grouping. Now notice in the second example if we look down through here, there aren't any duplicate uh, company names. Should we still add supplier ID? Well, of course, because uh, the query needs to work on any data that might be in the database, not just on what's there now. So that's the lesson on, on making sure that your grouping is unique. And notice that uh, I'm also grouping or ordering by in a unique manner. Uh, again, this is important for high quality code where a downstream consumer of the results of the select statement might begin to expect that the order by is consistent. Uh, but in situations where I have multiple company suppliers with the same name, the order by would not necessarily be consistent. So now let's do some multi-level grouping and uh, or multi-column grouping and in this case what I've done is I've taken the suppliers company name and the category name and then the product name and the unit price and so what we can see is we scroll down a little bit we see a company like exotic liquids that provides products in two different categories beverages and spreads 
So this combination is intended to become uh, the basis of the grouping. So these two records here would be the in one group, but exotic, exotic liquids with spreads would be in a second group. So I'm going to use both the cat company name and the category, so the supplier and the category, as the basis for grouping. And here is an example of that. So I'm displaying the company name, there's the, the category name, and then the average unit price. And notice that I have exotic liquids in, with both beverages and spreads. So looking at the group by, you can see that both columns that I'm displaying are in the group by. So syntactically, that's required. It's not required that I add in the supplier ID and the category ID. However, um, I would be inaccurately calculating uh, those items from the beverages category. So in order to be uh, sure that I have an accurate uh, calculation, I need to add these two columns to my query. So there's supplier ID and category ID. Again, it doesn't look much different, but um, in situations where I have millions or billions of records, we might see that uh, it's much more likely that I'd have two companies, two suppliers with the same name, or two categories with the same name. Um, now, consider that exact same set of records, but let's order the columns differently. I'm going to put the category on the left, company separately, and also at, uh, order by the company name. So notice that this is very focused on the company first and then the category second. But I'm going to change this and here we have an example of the category first and then the company. So what I'm pointing out here is that even though all of the values that are returned are exactly the same as in that previous example. The information that I can draw from this is quite different. So here I'm focused first on the beverages and secondarily on the supplier. So I can say, well, who supplies us beverages or items in the beverages category? This is a great query to answer that question. And the previous query uh, would answer questions more like, um, what does Bigfoot Breweries supply us? Oh, they supply us beverages. How many different things does Exotic Liquids supply us? Well, they supply us beverages and spreads. So again, it's a very kind of minor shift between those two queries, but they provide quite different information for a decision maker. So in summary, um, make sure that your group by statement specifies a unique grouping, and typically this is done by adding a primary key to the group by. You can specify multiple columns in the group by. So I've done two as an example, but you could have three or four or five. And then the groups are determined by unique combinations of the values in the columns. And then finally, just changing the column ordering and the row ordering can produce quite different uh, information for decision making.